So what did you got it? It's good. Finally, you became an offshore dealer. There you go, Neil. <laughs> I just want to have one question. Yeah. Um, what's the point you like the clinch the best? Like, why, why you choose the clinch food? Mm, I think because of the craftsmanship. Because mm. it's so well made. The quality of the leather. And, yeah, I think that's it. But we have a lot of like craftsmanship boots companies in the world, right? Yeah, but it's not really craftsman, you know? It's like half. Half, half craftsman. They make it somewhere else and then like, you know, in a factory. So we can say something like all the handmade yeah, in here, like the clean. Hand welted and everything, you know? Right, right, right. This is the point you like it. Yeah, yeah. Even like your customers? Yeah, I think so. They know it as well. Oh yeah. Mm. But sometimes it's really hard to, you know, make on the sales these kind of like a high prices food. Yeah. I mean you can't please everyone and you're not gonna convince everyone. But those who know they know. Yeah. The boots freaks. Yeah, boots freaks or just people that appreciate the quality. Right. And the hours of work that goes behind a pair of boots. It's not just a pair of boots. Hey. When you started with Working with Japanese brand, yeah. what is that like? You know, the first challenge for you to start with? Yeah, I mean, at that time, Japanese brands they weren't really interested in the European market. You no, know? they didn't care about me. I had to like beg. I mean, it took like two years for me to get. Nowadays, Japanese brands they have to look outside of Japan for Europe and US, I guess. And the challenge. Well, I think that was the challenge, just to like get a permission to buy that brand. Right. You couldn't just like ask for an email address and say, "Hey, I want to buy this." Sure, buy. It wasn't that easy, you know. Someone right. wrote kind of interesting article about this and about that it's maybe not a good thing that you know the the owner has control of everything. You know, it might not be a good thing. No, no. Yeah. But is that same thing happening in your country as well, like a small companies or? No, I don't think so. Okay. No. Is that like don't a... have, maybe it's a, like a, I have no idea, but maybe it's a Japanese thing that you have like a boss, like a senpai. Right. Who, like, oh, the boss. okay. I don't think we have like, I mean Mats is the boss of Indigo Ferra for example, but he's not the boss in that way. He listens to his employees, you know, and yeah. Yeah. for ideas and then he tries to keep up with the market and everything. I think you have to. So, say hello to Matsu. <laughs> <laughs> you say hello. <laughs> Matsu, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> so, do you have any idea or you thinking about Japanese brand? What's the next phase for them, like, you know? For denim? Uh, not the only the denim, no. but like uh, this kind of like that, a, okay. the, they need to see the European market or overseas market, right? For sure. For sure. And they have to maybe understand it because it's quite different, I think, from the Japanese market. And this this kind of, um, what do you say? Mentality? Yeah, me, no, not the, the, the shopping mentality. It doesn't really exist in that, in Europe. I mean, we have customers that buy luxury products, but not like here, I think. Okay, what's the here happening? I, li I think many brands, they think like, okay, let's target on Europe. It's a big market. Let's go to some uh, exhibition, some fashion thing, and then we're going to make 100 new customers and we're going to sell so much. It doesn't exist. It's like when you have like fine brands like this, then you have like maybe, I don't know, five, ten stores in Europe that can handle that kind of product. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's how I feel. So you're talking about like a, uh, the store, numbers of the store in the European countries? Yeah. It's not really the um, same as in here in Japan, right? No, because yeah, you have like, I don't know, how many stores does have in, in Japan? I don't know, maybe 50, 60, I don't know. And in Europe, four, five. 
Yes, yeah, so, so, so they are trying to create the market more, right? Yeah. How are they going to grow more, you know, in Europe? to making the more dealers in Europe? In Europe, I don't know. I think they have to have someone who understands the European market, like maybe yourself. I'm just saying it's, maybe it's not that easy. It's not that easy. No. Even like the same things happening yeah. to Japan market, mm -hmm. um, big American company yeah. came into the Japan market. Yeah. They tried to do that their American style in Japan, oh, yeah, but they failed. Yeah, exactly. Same things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing. I'm trying to very hard to explain the, this kind of situation. Yeah. What's the difference between Japan and the outside of Japan? Yeah. I think only Japan have their own system, yeah. and also they have. Um, quite big enough market last yeah. 40 years, yeah, so exactly. that's why they don't see the outside yeah, of Japan. They, didn't, they, didn't have they don't, they don't need to. No, exactly. And then there's the whole thing about the pricing. As you know, it's totally different, like wholesale retail in Japan and right. Europe. Right. It's another story about, yeah, you know... I mean, if, we, if I were to set my prices like the Japanese does, they couldn't have my business, you know. I don't make much money from my business, right. but if I had it that way, I couldn't do anything, I couldn't yeah. pay my bills. Yeah. So, thank you, Miko. Hello. Have an interview. You're <laughs> so, you're going back to... Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yes. Okay. Back to Sweden. Back to Sweden. Back to the cold. Yeah. When are we going to meet up next time? Uh, next month, I'll be back. To? Mm -hmm. Japan. Yeah. Again? In October. <laughs> Get a second house here. All right, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. bye.